Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome to episode 4 in our campaign game with Buy Stealth and C, the DVG game of World War II combat where you take charge of an Italian commando unit and attempt to sink British shipping in various allied harbors. Now, before we start our mission, I wanted to make mention that Jimmy J, who was one of the commandos that actually successfully blew up a ship in our last mission, posted a link a couple of episodes ago to a documentary that's on YouTube. Now, his comment got to sent to spam, I just noticed recently, but the video itself is really good. And it's about mini submarine combat in World War II. And the middle third of it or so, starting about 20 minutes or so in, is about these SLC units and this Italian commando unit. So if you like the game and wanna know more about the history behind it, that's worth taking a few minutes to go check it out. I'll put a link down in the description down below. Now, it's Submarine Monday, and that means it's time for us to go sink stuff. So let's get started on our third mission. Before we jump into our mission, let's do a quick overview of the campaign so far. We've had two missions, sinking two cargo ships and accumulating a total of 11 victory points. Now we spent four victory points in the previous mission to upgrade our starting position. In, this, in, in our third mission now, what we're going to do is to upgrade, we're going to spend four of those victory points to upgrade our SLC prototype to the SLC Series 100. This is actually somewhat of a big deal because we have all of these level one cards that attach to the SLC prototype and we're gonna be able to replace them with SLC two cards, excuse me, across the board. So we can upgrade our battery, the transmission fault, and the ballast tank faults. This might seem like a huge deal and it actually is a pretty big deal. I did the, a rough math estimate on this is it's gonna save us about one and a half faults per mission if our luck is fairly average. And what it means is instead of needing to roll a six to fix one of these when they immediately go wrong, we only need to be able to roll a five or a six. So that's significant when you kind of add up all of the, the number of times that happens over the course of a mission. So I'm looking forward to giving our new SLC Series 100 models a run in this mission. Now, also of note, uh, the harbor alert level, because we had some success in sinking a ship in the last mission, it's raised to a level five. That means we've swapped out the default patrol craft response for the surface to this upgraded level two model, which means they're going to detect us, uh, the patrol crafts are gonna detect us on the surface at a much higher rate. It also raises the number of maximum number of patrol craft that could be in action at any one point in time from four to six. So uh, harbor defenses, slightly more alert and slightly more adept at their tasks, and yet we're bringing a little bit better equipment to this mission too. Now let's talk a little bit about this mission because we're all set to go. This is Gibraltar Harbor again. Our next mission will be in Alexandria, and we definitely want to get one more victory point in this mission so we can upgrade the starting position for that mission next. So but that's gonna be how we want. We definitely wanna get at least one victory point in this mission, that's our goal. Hopefully we can do a little bit better. Now historically, the crews that did this mission uh, ended up with 10 victory points. So we'll also like to see if we can do uh, as, as good or better, as well or better than the historical counterparts did. All three crews survived this mission in the historical framework as well. Now, you'll notice that again, we have some cargo ships over here on the left that are worth two points. We have a cargo ship in here that's worth two points. These are named ship, the Durham, the Fiona Shell, and the Denbydale. We have some one-point cargo ships that are enticingly close. Then we also have up here the battleship Nelson worth 10 victory points, the aircraft carrier Arc Royale worth seven points, and a couple other five and three-point targets inside the harbor. What are we gonna do then, you might say? Well, here's what we're doing. Sansonetti and La Torre are back in this mission. They had a rough last mission, forcing them to scuttle and barely survived their, their mission there, but they did sink a ship in their first mission. Coming back for their third mission, they're gonna man SLC number one. We're gonna try to send them northwest and then up here to try to take out the Fiona shell. If things go sideways, maybe they can hit one of those lesser targets of opportunity. SLC number two, we're giving Walichi and Lille a day off. They're going to come back for the next mission in Alexandra and we're bringing in another new crew. Patrici and Cruce are gonna man SLC number two. They have no skills and no abilities, but check it out. Six, actually wait, a relatively short distance, only six movement segments away is this one point cargo ship. If all goes well, they can submerge one, two, 
three. So in two hours, they should be able to get onto this, this cargo ship, perhaps blowing it up very early in the morning, getting them in experience points and getting them out. That's the plan with SLC number two. Now, SLC number three, Kujimani and Jimmy J, who blew up a cargo ship in the last mission, are coming back for their second mission. They're going to man SLC number three in this mission. Now, I don't think, I'm gonna say this, I don't think this is optimal, but I wanna see how it works. Instead of giving them a point in repair skill, I've given them an upgrade in pilot skill. And we're gonna be super aggressive with them, seeing if we can take their pilot skill and make some successful die rolls to get them up inside the mole, potentially heading for the Nelson or the Arc Royale. If all else fails, hopefully we can get them in the mole to get them an experience point, or maybe even sink this destroyer, the Haythorpe. This, I mean, this is far away. I think this is hard, and I think it's a risk, but I wanna see how it works. My apologies in advance to Kujimani and Jimmy Day if, if, you don't, if you guys don't make it, but hopefully you understand. With that being said, we're ready to start. So let's jump in now. Uh, oh yeah, I think we're all set to start. Let's jump in right now with our first turn and get started. Let's get started with our fault checks. We have to pick one fault check for each one of our SLCs. We'll start with SLC one. Now this is Sansonetti and La Torre, who you recall had awful luck with their fault checks on the last mission. Hoping for better luck as we start out here. Anything except a wetsuit. Okay. <laughs> I didn't fix this. I did not fix this. This is... Oh, people aren't going to believe me. But anyway, okay. <laughs> so, this is the really bad one. But, now last time they got unlucky on their rolls, right? So, we it's a repair check of a five. So, if we roll a five or a six on the repair check, they fix it. And they get two shots because their repair skill is a two. This is a huge roll for them. This is exactly how it started last time. Five or six... A one and a three. No, seriously. This is like the... Makes me want to start over. I did shuffle these too. Okay, uh, so Sansonetti and Latour are stunned and their wetsuit has failed them. So once again, we're going to have to get them out of wetsuit problems. Let's move on to SLC number two. Alrighty, SLC number two with Patrici and Cruce picking their fault. Hopefully not another wetsuit. Aha, SLC number two, a transmission fault. This would mean that we can't do a full, this would mean that we can't do a full move, but we have a repair check of a five or a six on this because we're now using the SLC series 100. So hoping here that they can fix this, rolling a five or a six. Yes, we got a five, excellent. Very good luck. So that fault goes by the wayside. Sansonetti, La Torre, that's how you repair stuff, guys. Just saying, just pointing this out. Let's go to SLC number three. SLC number three, we have Kujimani and Jimmy J who had our stars in our previous mission. Their fault is a warhead fault. <clears throat> now this has a repair check of a six because we're still using that kind of default warhead system that's on this. Need to roll a six, otherwise the warhead is broken. We get a four, so the warhead is broken. We will need to repair that. That's not good because we're trying to send them straight towards the mole and time is of the essence here. So that's not a good roll for them to start off either. So not the greatest start. SLC one is stunned. SLC number two is fine. And SLC number three, our experienced crew is struggling at the start here. Now bef before we leave this SLC, SLC behind, we might as well do our initial SLC round check here. So as we start off, this is turn one, it's not 12.30, our crews are here, we have to roll one more time to see which one of our three SLCs has an additional fault check. And it is SLC number two, which was actually, actually okay at the start. So let's make that last fault check before we start here. All right, last fault check before we start out, we get the ballast tank fault. Whoa, that means we can't submerge. This is a rough start for us here. We need a five or a six to fix it. Now, um, Patricia and Cruz, they did well on their first attempt. Get out your wrenches, guys. Five or a six. Yes, most excellent, a six. So they fix both things and avoid some disastrous faults. And now it's time for us to make our initial moves. Let's get going. So SLC number one, starting off this mission exactly the same way they did last time. We need, we gotta try to get them recovered. Otherwise they just can't function with one action point per turn. And that's basically the effect of being stunned. So we're gonna try to have them do the recovery action with one action point 
They normally need a four, but because this is a wetsuit fault, we need a five or a six. Come on, guys, shake out of your doldrums. Have some coffee. Get a two. So once again, SLC one. This is exactly the same start they had last time. I find this somewhat um, unlikely, but such are the, the vagaries of life, I guess, here. SLC number two, however, starting off the best we can, they fixed both rings, Patricia and Cruce. They are, as we pointed out, going to, actually what we're going to do to start them off is use both of their action points. They're going to submerge. So they are under the water. That's the safest place to be. SLC number three with Kujimani and Jimmy J have the, def have the broken warhead. However, um, we're, because we have the pilot skill on them, we're going to... Uh, take a little bit of a, a risky advantage here. We're going to try to make them, uh, have them do some risky maneuvers with one action point, figuring that the odds are with them to get, uh, to be successful more often than not. So the first thing we're going to try to have them do is submerge. Now to submerge with using one action point, they need to perform a, uh, a skill check on their pilot skill. And because we have given them their second, uh, put their experience point on their pilot skill, we get to roll two dice, and if we roll a four, five, or six on either one of these two dice, they successfully dive and go below the surface. So that's going to be our first attempt here. Two dice, we need a four, five, or six on one of them. We get a five and a three, so that's successful. SLC number three submerges. Now, the next thing we're gonna have them do is do a submerged full roll with their other action point. Once again, because they have the pilot skill, we get two rolls on this, and we need a four, five, or six to succeed at this. So doing the same thing, and if they do, we can go two squares forward. We get a five and a six. Wow, doing really well here. So they're going to go two squares forward and head towards the mole. They move slightly off our camera here. Now it is time for the defensive reaction. As we did last time in the last episode, I'm gonna pull the non-critical reaction rolls off screen to keep things moving along. However, based on feedback on the previous uh, episode, I'm curious whether you like to see these on camera or whether you prefer me to summarize these after the fact with the idea that I'm saving the critical card pulls and doing those live. So uh, let me know down in the comments below. For this episode, I am gonna do it the way I did it last time. So let's make our pulls and I'll be back with the results in a second. Some unfortunate news for Sansanetti and La Torre, which we kind of expected. They got detected both by spotlights, by the searchlights, and a patrol craft. So we have a patrol craft that has rushed to the scene and is right in front of them now. Things looking dire quickly for Sansanetti and La Torre again. Our other two SLCs, however, had no reaction, undetected by searchlights, nor were they spotted by patrol craft. Being submerged, of course, of course, helped a lot. So let's now move on to our cleanup phase, which basically doesn't involve anything, and we're on to our 1 a.m. turn. So we have to figure out what we're going to do with Sansonetti and Latora. But before we do that, let's roll for our fault check and the 130 turn, see which SLC has a fault. It is SLC number one. <laughs> Sansonetti and Latora having the mission from hell here. Hopefully we can get you guys at least out of here. We're going to have to try to scuttle. I think that's the only option we have. But let's see what the fault is first. So as we start out this 1 a.m. turn, let's see Sansonetti and Latora's fault. We get SC Ballast Fault. So they will get two rolls on this. They need a five or a six again to repair it because this is the, the Series 100. Let's see if they can get better repair luck. Now we get good luck. There it is. There's a five. So this one passes them by. However, let's go now to our actions and see what we might do. Once again, we're going to use discretion here with Sansonetti and La Torre stunned patrol craft number one bearing down on them. Our options here, I think our best bet is to try to keep them alive. And being an experienced crew, we want to do that. The odds are just not very good if we, if we take other options. So we are going to have Sansonetti and La Torre try to scuttle their SLC. They need a four, five, or six to do it. If they don't get it, this patrol craft will come bearing down on them and have a very good chance to take them out of action. So hoping for a four, five, or six. Ah, oh, get a two. God, what a horrific mission. So this patrol craft number one is very likely to come bearing down on them here. Oh, actual, uh, yeah, I think they will. Yeah, I was thinking of one thing. Well, I'll check one thing, but okay. So next up we have SLC number two, Patrici and Cruce. They are going to move underneath the water at a speed of two, heading towards that cargo ship. Now, SLC number three presents some interesting options. So, SLC number three, Kujimani and Jimmy J, 
They could head towards the mole, but because it looks like we're going to lose SLC number one, Sansaniti and La Torre, that leaves no ships heading over towards these cargo ships to the northwest except for SLC number two, which we're going to aim for one of the near ones. So I think we're going to try to turn SLC number two and head them up towards these two-point cargo ships, which could be some easier targets. With that in mind, they're going to make a dive. A, they're submerged. They're going to make a dive move. They need a four, five, or six to succeed. They get two shots because of their advanced pilot skill. They get a five and a two. Once again, they have succeeded. They're going to try to use that second point to go straight ahead now. Their second action point. They need a four, five, or six. They get two rolls. We get a two and a three, unfortunately. So they stay there. Still, they've reoriented themselves and heading towards the cargo ships now, and it's a straight shot across the harbor. That brings us now to the reaction phase for our 1 a.m. turn. So let's uh, do that, and then we'll be right back. 1 a.m. in the morning, the patrol craft spotted SLC number three and heads right in front of them. So Kujimani and Jimmy J have a, a patrol craft in front of them. SLC number two escaped undetected. SLC number three also did not have a subsequent patrol craft come into account, but it's time now for them to move them. They did escape further problems with patrol craft, and this patrol craft here in the movement phase moves towards its nearest detected target, which is SLC number one. Now we go into the attack phase, which unfortunately is a kind of a grim card pull here. They're stunned already, so if the attack succeeds, Sansaniti and Latora would be killed and removed from the game. The attack pull is a seven or greater. They need a six or less to survive. A huge pull for our efforts here. SLC number one is eliminated. The Sansonetti and Latora are lost. Wow, that was about as bad a run of luck as you could take. That, uh, sorry for the loss there. That That's exceptionally bad luck. Patrol craft number one takes them out of action. SLC number one is removed from the board. It's down to SLC number two and SLC number three, and we have also lost one of our experienced crews here. Mm, rough mission so far. All right, we start out our next turn, the 1.30 a.m. turn to see which one of our SLCs has had a fault with it here. Hoping for a one, because that would overlap with one we've already got. Yes, so we get an SLC number one, which is out of action, so we don't have any problems with faults on this turn. Let's now move to our actions in the 1.30 a.m. turn. So relatively straightforward, I think, here. SLC number two, Patricia and Cruce, showing amazing promise, are going to move straight ahead, two to the north. They are closing in on their cargo ship target, which would be optimal for us. Now, for Kujimani and Jimmy J, I'm tempted to use their skill points to make these rolls, but if they fail on that movement one, they would stay detected. So we're going to be a little bit more conservative here, and we're going to use both action points and have them move to go right underneath the patrol craft, come out on the other side, and that way they stay submerged and they lose that detection marker. So now let's go to our harbor reactions and see how we do in terms of detection and by searchlights and by patrol craft. SLC number two, Patricia and Cruce showing amazing skill at avoiding both searchlights and patrol craft. Kujimani and Jimmy J must be having conversations about something because for the second consecutive uh, turn, uh, enemy patrol craft have spotted them. And the bad thing is that patrol craft number three shows up in front of them and detects them. Patrol craft number two can use that in the movement phase and move on top of them and attack. This is not good. Now they are submerged. They need a 10 or greater. This is a significant card pull, so we're going to pull this on camera, hoping to avoid this. They just pulled, they pulled like an 11 twice in a row here, 11 and a 12 to get detected. We needed less than a 10 to not get stunned. And stunned. Yes, excellent, a four. So they avoid injury and stunning and other problems. Now we go to the cleanup phase, which basically just involves flipping this one over to ready it for the next turn. Kujimani and Jimmy J attack, attracting, attracting a lot of enemy attention as we go to the 2 a.m. turn. Let's roll now for our SLC fault. Hoping we get lucky again with another one. Oh, yes. I mean, Sansonetti and the Tour have had such bad luck that they're still having their, their SLC break even after they're dead and their SLC has been destroyed here. That's how bad their luck was in this mission. Uh, but anyway, that's good because now we can go on 
to our action phase here at 2 a.m. So our actions here in the 2 a.m. turn, I think, are pretty good. Now, there is one more patrol craft off to the south here that's a little bit off camera, but most of the attention centered on Kujimani and Jimmy J. However, Patricia and Kuruse can move forward too and go underneath this cargo ship, settling in underneath it and getting ready to detach their warhead and attach it to the bottom of the cargo ship. We may even want to consider having them continue on, but... That's another thought there. So they are underneath the cargo ship and in good position. We're going to do the same thing we did before with uh, Jimmy J and Kujimani, and that they're going to use both of their action points to make sure they succeed at that move, because that will lose the detection for the patrol craft, which gives them a much better survival chance. So now we go to the 2 a.m. harbor reaction. Let's see how things go for our heroes now. So patrol craft number one, which is off screen to the south, went the wrong way and they've kind of moved themselves almost out of the out of action altogether. Patrol craft number two, which was here, slid in the same direction as number three, following in the wake of Kujimani and Jimmy J. The next big role here, we're going to do this on camera, is patrol craft number three. They don't know where uh, Kujimani and Jimmy J are, so they need to make a, a random movement roll here. Hoping for anything except a one on this eight sided die, a four would be nice because that would move them away. They get an eight, which has them hold their position. That's fine, that's not a problem at all. So there will be no patrol craft attacks here. We can now clean up this turn, which involves basically removing patrol craft number one from the board, as they're too far away to stay in action. We're gonna to go to the 2.30 a.m. turn, so it's turn number five of 12. We're approaching our destinations here. Things could get noisy shortly here. Let's move on, actually, and roll to see which one of our SLCs has a fault, hoping again for another one here. A two, ah, not good. Patricia and Cruce, just as they get underneath the cargo ship, have something go wrong with their SLC. Let's see what it is. All right, this is a big pull here. We'll hopefully get something like a breathing fault or a battery fault, which wouldn't cause uh, performance functions here. We get battery fault, excellent. They get a repair check roll. This is the, the SLC 100 here. So on a five or a six, it's no problem. If it does break, this can still take two malfunctions before they can no longer move. So from that perspective, it's a good thing to have break, I think, at this point in the mission. We get a five once again. Boy, Patricia and Cruce identify the problem with the battery, reconnect the cable. That problem is not a problem, and they continue to inspire and impress with their rookie performance here. All right, let's do our actions here. So Patricia and Cruce are going to detach the warhead and get it ready to attach to the cargo ship. That would be in the next turn here. So we'll put it on top of them like that. They are in position next turn to blow up the cargo ship on their very first mission, performing almost flawlessly so far. Actually, flawlessly so far. They have had no problems. They've fixed everything that's broken. They've made their way right there, They've detached the warhead so far, a perfect mission. Now, once again, for uh, Jimmy J and Kujimani, we're going to be a little bit on the conservative side because if they fail this move, there's a one in four chance that one of these two patrol craft could end up on top of them. Or if they get detected, these patrol craft will automatically come there. So we're going to be a little bit conservative and move them with both of their action points, spend two points to move them northeast. Now, I think what we're going to try to do is have them skip under this craft and try to get to this two point craft here which would be a little bit juicier target, the Fiona shell up there. But we'll see how things progress with them. Now let's do the enemy reaction. Not the best results here as Patricia and Cruce prepare the warhead to attach to the cargo ship. They are spotted by searchlights. Likewise, Kujimani and Jimmy J must have some kind of a noise problem with their craft because once again, a patrol craft has spotted them. Patrol craft one reappears on the scene in front of them. The bad part about this is that well, they're detected. If they escape detection, patrol craft number one is going to come over here to try to detect and attack them, but I don't think there's anything we can do about it. We come now to the patrol craft movement. Patrol craft two and three are going to move to their closest detected target, which means they come bearing down on Kujimani and Jimmy J. However, they are not able to reach them because they have a movement of two. That brings us to the end of our 2.30 a.m. turn. Patrol craft number one is flipped over. We head to three o'clock in the morning. It's all to do for SLC number two. Patricia and Cruce have a decision to make, but first we have to see what kind of a fault there might be on our craft here. 
Uh, Kujimani and Jimmy J detected as well will likely probably go under these ships and continue on. But still, let's see first which one of our SLCs has a fault. Hoping again for a one. Yes, nice. SLC number one, Sansonetti and La Torre, even posthumously are kind of providing some benefit to us here. Now we have decisions to make as we go to our action phase in the 3 a.m. turn. SLC number two, Patricia and Cruz cannot move. Because they've detached the warhead, they are stuck there. So they're really their only option. I think the best option here, we're gonna blow up the cargo ship. This ship is gonna come bearing down on them and attack because they're detected. And we're just gonna to have to hope that because we're submerged, we get less than a 10 on that. So that's gonna be the strategy here. And then they can scuttle. Actually, they're gonna to have to move because they got a ship on top of them, but we'll sort all that out. So first of all, they're going to attach the warhead here, blow up this cargo ship, which sent, goes to the bottom. And now they are submerged and detected in this spot. So successful cargo ship sinkage by Patricia and Cruce. The question now is, can they survive? And can we scuttle that SLC? SLC number three, bracketed by patrol craft here, is going to do the same thing. They're going to lose, well, not the same thing, the same thing they've done in the previous turns. They're going to lose detection by using both of their movement points and heading straight for the Fiona shell to the north. Now it's time for our enemy harbor reaction. Let's see what happens. Uh, I just realized that patrol craft three and two here are going to head for Patricia and Cruce as well. They're going to get attacked by three patrol craft in this turn. And it depends on, I guess, what happens here with SLC number three. Oof, it's all to do here. Okay, searchlights are already detected SLC number two. We pull searchlights for SLC number three. We get eight. They pass. Okay, so now we go to patrol craft response. SLC number two is submerged. However, it's detected, so it's an eight plus. We get a six. No new patrol craft appears in front of SLC number two. SLC number three, really important they stay undetected here. This is a big pull for Kujimani and Jimmy J. They need, they are submerged and undetected. A 10 or greater is the hit on that. They get an eight as well so uh, well eight and they are okay so a good turn for us here in terms of card pulls for that however now it's time to move our existing patrol craft and the rule is patrol craft moves when there is an enemy detected within three squares they move two squares to it so patrol craft number three and number two come hunting for uh, patrice and cruce patrol craft number one as well we have three patrol craft on top for this attack phase. This is brutal. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. So we get three card pulls. They're submerged, which is good. So a 10 or greater hits. Less than a 10, and they're okay. There's no effect of the attack. If they get hit once, they get stunned. If you get hit when you're stunned, you're killed. So at the very least, we're hoping the the worst would be two hits. That would that would that would finish off Patricia and Cruce and their SLC number two. Um, here we go. 